So this is the new Zwift Hub One. And with it comes one of the first trainers on the market to have no cassette at all. Well, I mean, it has a cassette, but it's just got one cog, creatively named the Zwift Cog. And with that also comes the new Zwift clicks that go on your handlebars. So the Zwift Hub 1 is essentially taking the existing Zwift Hub trainer that's been out for exactly a year and adding the new Zwift cog as well as the new Zwift clicks to make an entirely new Zwift trainer package that also includes one year of Zwift. So with that, let's just dive straight into it, starting off with the specs. As you can see, the trainer is a direct drive trainer. That means you take your rear wheel off your bicycle and then put your chain directly on the back of the trainer or on the Zwift cog in this particular case. The benefit to doing that over a wheel on trainer is that you typically have much better accuracy, but more importantly, you have much better traction, if you will, on that trainer. So you can put out really hard sprint efforts and you're not getting any sort of slippage like you would with the wheel on trainer. In the case of the Zwift Hub, as a 4.7 kilo flywheel in the back, generally speaking, the bigger the flywheel, the more realistic that road-like feel is. Uh, again, this is the same as the Zwift Hub in the past. From a simulation standpoint, it can reproduce up to 16% gradients uh, and go up to 1800 watts of resistance with a stated accuracy claim of plus or minus 2.5%. It's got both AMP Plus as well as Bluetooth Smart compatibility across both smart trainers as well as power broadcasting. It even has the ability to go ahead and pair up to your heart rate strap so you can save Bluetooth channels on Apple TV. From a skewer compatibility standpoint, pretty much got you covered whether you have uh, crookly style or through axle style. You can see the exact ones on the screen right there. And then from a cassette compatibility standpoint, that's where it gets a little bit interesting because of course there is no cassette on the back. Instead, you need to look at what your bike would normally be. And in this case, they claim eight speed through 12 speed cassette compatibility. Uh, so if your bike normally has that. And then beyond that, it doesn't really matter if you have like a seven speed cassette in your bike, as long as you can find a way to mount your bike on the trainer. And that's where it's usually a little bit trickier for like some of the much older seven speed bikes. And of course, just like the Zwift Hub when it changed about a month ago, all Zwift hubs out there now include one year of Zwift built in. So you're paying for that, whether or not you use it, uh, it is included in the box. Speaking of that box, here is the box. Here's all the box parts unboxed. Uh, essentially the way it works is you're gonna attach both the front and the rear leg. I uh, like all these little fancy markings on there so you can't screw it up and put it on the wrong direction. Uh, you'll also find in the box the box of clicks right here. Uh, so this is a tiny little box that includes that, uh, the remote control, if you will, that you're gonna put on your handlebar. You're gonna find the power cables there. Then you're gonna find either the quick release or through axle adapters on those colorful pieces of cardboard. What's handy about those is if you're not sure the exact length of your through axle adapter, it includes like a ruler built into it. It's, it's kind of nice. So from an assembly standpoint, the only thing you really had to do here was to attach the legs and then plug in the power cord. Then you're gonna go ahead and put your bike on the trainer and you're gonna put it on that new Zwift cog, that single cog in the back. Uh, now, when you first put it on there, your derailleur, your rear derailleur might not be lined up quite right. No big deal, just simply adjust like you normally would adjust your shifting until it finds the right spot there. If you were to start pedaling and it's not in the right spot, it might sound horrific, it's not a problem. You just simply shift until it becomes quiet. And note, while there's slight differences in the chain width on both Shimano as well as Access, uh, I didn't have any issues with either short-term anyways. I think that's more of like a long-term wear thing, but, but practically speaking, no problems, they both worked well. Now the Zwift Cog, the thing that you see there, uh, is basically just replacing a normal cassette. Uh, so you could actually take this off if you want to, put a normal cassette on, you're not like restricted to the Zwift Cog on this particular trainer. Now the main benefit here is that it's compatible with any bike out there. So that means that when Zwift sells you this trainer, they don't have to ask you which type of cassette you want, eight, nine, 10, 11 speed cassette, they just give you this and it's compatible with everything. It also has some benefits as well if you're talking a mountain bike or some other thing that may be geared uh, more towards high inclines. Uh, when you're on the flats in Zwift, it gives you more flexibility because you basically have this virtual cassette range. And finally, the last benefit of the Zwift Cog is that you can easily swap between different bikes uh, with different cassettes. So in my case, I have both 10, 11, and 12 speed bikes around here. Uh, and my wife has both 10 and 12 speed bikes around here, actually 11 speed as well. So we can all use all those bikes on the same trainer without ever swapping cassettes or having horrific noises. And in case you're wondering, existing Zwift Hub owners can buy the Zwift Cog for 79 bucks. Uh, and that also includes the clicks in the package as well. And hey, a quick note, if you are finding this video interesting or useful, definitely give it a like down the bottom. It really does help with this video and the channel quite a bit. So starting off with getting into Zwift before we talk more about the actual shifting side of it, when you open up Zwift, it's gonna have the pairing menu. You're gonna pair first the controllable trainer side of the Zwift hub, then you're gonna pair the power, then you're gonna pair cadence, and then if you want to, you can pair the heart rate sensor. What's cool though here is that you can actually bring in the heart rate via the Zwift hub. So I can pair it up in the Zwift companion app, and I can take my heart rate strap there, pair it through the Zwift hub, and then it'll broadcast that out uh, as one cohesive package. 
The reason you would want to do that is if you're on Apple TV, Apple TV is limited to two concurrent Bluetooth connections plus the remote. Uh, however, what's defined as a connection is anything under one bundle. So anything Zwift sends to it as part of that Zwift package is only considered one connection. And then the clicks would be your second connection or the Zwift Play uh, controllers if you have those instead. Uh, and then finally, you want to go ahead and pair up these Zwift Click buttons. Uh, now, you can use either the Zwift Clicks that come in the package or for 100 bucks, you can get the Zwift Play controllers which include more control of the game and different features as well. From a shifting standpoint, they operate the same, uh, so either shifting up or down that virtual cassette, so it doesn't really matter which one you use. Okay, with everything all paired up, we'll start riding. Uh, now, the first thing you're going to notice when you ride along is you're probably going to shift your shifters by accident. It's not a big deal. As I mentioned earlier on, if you do that, you might initially hear something that's like not quite perfect. And if you shift again, you'll probably hear some horrible sounds. Again, that's because that's no longer on that particular cog in the back. So to demonstrate what happens if you forget to shift with the clicks and instead use your shifters, I'm going to do this one over here first and watch the back. You can see it's still kind of functional. I do it again and now it starts to get pretty loud and messy. So I'm going to go back again. Not quite right. There we go on target. And the same for the other side. I'm good to run. I'm still good there. Now it gets noisy and then if I do it one more time, it gets really noisy. So I'm going back to the center here. What about the front? Do both in my case because it's E-tap. You can see no difference there at all. Um, this makes it a lot quieter, of course. You'll make that mistake a few times, uh, especially if you switch bikes. I switched bikes at one point midway through the testing and immediately like just my muscle memory went to that. Again, no big deal. So instead to shift, all you're doing is pressing that little remote control on your handlebars there. You can place that wherever you want. Uh, and that's either gonna go one notch up or down that virtual cassette. And so when people talk about virtual cassette or virtual gearing, they're basically talking about replicating the shifting that you would have. So in the case of Zwift, you have a 24 gear virtual cassette, uh, meaning that you have one through 24, and those gears are shown in the upper left-hand corner of Zwift. Uh, we'll just talk about it in just a second as well, and it's gonna replicate that. It's not customizable like a lot of smart bikes are today, something maybe we'll see in the future, I hope. Uh, but today it's just up and down that cassette. I found that myself, I generally hung out like in gear 16, 17, 16, 17 for most of my steady state riding. I go into a sprint, it'd be up to gear like 20 or so. Uh, if I was just easy pedaling, maybe down to 12 or 13. Almost everything happens in that small little range right there. The shifting responsiveness is instant. To their credit, like I was concerned to be lag and stuff like that. It's spot on instant. It's virtually identical to uh, electronic shifting on either DI2 or on SRAM Access. I tried both of them and it's basically the same on both of those. So kudos to them on that. One thing that's worthwhile noting is that the shifting does not go from the clicks uh, to your back trainer. It actually goes via the Zwift app. Uh, and that's important because as we'll talk about in compatibility in just a little bit later on, that means that you can't use this with other third party apps from a shifting standpoint. You can use erg mode and broadcasting, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but when it comes to shifting, you have to have the Zwift app to basically send that message onto the trainer to simulate that shift. Now, if you do a sprint, you can just simply press that button a bunch of times and it goes pretty quickly. Uh, I didn't really have any problems. I'm not really like a through and through sprinter, but I didn't have any problems getting into a sprint and uh, quickly and getting back out of that. Again, there is no concept of going from the big ring to the small ring or vice versa. Uh, it's just one continuous kind of gear ring. Also, when it comes to positioning of those clicks on your handlebars, I tried a few different spots as well. I think my personal preference is actually on the inside of the handlebars uh, versus the outside, but uh, the only downside with the inside is that when you get into uh, the hoods for sprinting, it's a lot harder to reach, versus the outside is better for both kind of regular riding as well as sprinting, but it's not quite as ideal for regular riding. So again, you find what you want for your particular finger length positioning and all that kind of stuff. And in case you're wondering, what about your front chain ring? Should it be in the big ring or the small ring? Uh, well, for erg mode or structured workout mode, it doesn't really matter at all. Uh, you can put it in the small or the big, uh, but for regular riding around Zwift where it's going to change the incline up and down, uh, I found the big works best. And the reason is in the small, I ran out of gears. Like when I went all the way to 24, if I was to then do a sprint, I would definitely run out of gears. Uh, for regular riding, it wasn't really a problem, but just something to keep in mind. Uh, it probably for stronger riders, it's more of a challenge than other riders. But again, it's going to depend on kind of your particular wattage output. Now, I've got some final thoughts on whether or not it's worthwhile to actually get the hub version versus the classic version, because we'll talk about that in just a second. But first, just some general things. When it comes to overall responsiveness of the trainer, like road feel responsiveness, that was good. It's basically in the same realm as the Wahoo Kicker Core is, and most of the smart trainers in that price ballpark. Again, it's the same Zwift hub from a year ago, and that was pretty good too. I had no problems with that. That's why it became such an enormously popular trainer over the last year, because it 
feels pretty darn good. Likewise, when it comes to noise, no problems there as well. Uh, it's virtually silent, minus, of course, the sound of your chain. Uh, that's theoretically one benefit as well, is that you're not shifting in the back at all, so there is some savings there. Okay, so before we talk about accuracy, what about third-party compatibility? Can you use this Lyft Hub with other apps? Well, for that, you gotta divide it into basically two camps. Uh, the first camp is a software side of it, and the second camp is a hardware side of it. Keeping in mind that the Zwift Hub, you can still remove that Zwift cog and put on a normal cassette if you want to. So if you get sick of Zwift and you're like, no, I don't want this, that trainer is still fully compatible. In fact, the trainer is compatible across AMP Plus and Bluetooth Smart, completely adopting all the norms, all the industry standards, and you can use it with any app you want to out there. Yes, yeah, so you paid for that one year of Zwift, but I've used it with trainer road, as you can see right here, and you can use it with third-party apps, no problem. The challenge, though, becomes that there's two different modes to smart trainers. Well, there's more modes, but there's effectively two modes that you care about. Uh, there is so-called sim mode, which simulates the gradient as you go up and down things. That's what you're mostly using in Zwift. But if you do a structured workout in Zwift or otherwise, you use what's called erg mode. Uh, and that's where it's basically setting the wattage at a given target. 200 watts, 350 watts, whatever the case may be, and just iterates through your workout automatically. In that erg mode, you can use the Zwift Hub and the Zwift Cog with any app you want. It does not matter because you're not shifting at all. However, in the simulation mode, because you need a shift, you need the Zwift app to rebroadcast that shift command to the trainer. And that's where if you were to go and use the Zwift Cog with the Zwift Hub, that combination together in particular, with other platforms like Ruby or uh, IndieVelo um, or anything else out there that requires some sort of shifting, it will not work because it will not have that shifting there. Of course, again, you can always just take off those of COG and put your own cassette on there. That takes like three to four minutes if you're good at it at most. Uh, and so that's certainly an option. Okay, so what's the overall scoop? What's my final thoughts on this Zwift Hub? Well, in particular, this Zwift Hub 1, because again, there's two different versions of it. There's this Zwift Hub 1, which includes the clicks and the fancy little Zwift Cog thing there at the bottom. And there's this Zwift Hub Classic, which is the edition that you've had in the past for the past year or so uh, that has a normal cassette on it. Uh, and so you can still buy two versions and they both include the one year Zwift. And the thing is, I'm a person that generally skews more towards like industry standards it's compatibility, integration with other apps, and all that kind of stuff. And if you have the Hub 1 version with a Zwift Cog, you are effectively tied to Zwift. On the flip side, the benefit to that, though, is that you can change bikes really easily without any sort of cassette swapping or any sort of weirdness. It just works instantly. That is a massive benefit uh, for Zwift, both from a company standpoint as well as from a consumer standpoint. But if you have just one bike or if you have all bikes of the same cassette type, then in that case, I would struggle to see why I would want to limit myself in the future to just Zwift. Versus if I bought the mechanical version, the Zwift Hub Classic with a cassette that matched the bike that I had, then in that case, I could use any platform out there. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. If you found this video interesting or useful, give it a like at the bottom. There's plenty more sports technology stuff coming. With that, have a good one.